What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J and we are locked in. This is day two of recapping Cross on Amazon Prime. Now, this episode is called Ride Their White Horse. And what we've seen from Cross is that there's someone terrorizing his family. They're starting to send flowers. They're watching his kids. They're breaking into the home. He has two murders that he has to try to solve at this point. So there's a lot on Alex Cross's plate. But of course, what we've seen from him is resiliency. He's not giving up. So before we jump into this and we recap episode two, if you like murder mysteries, if you like crime, if you like drama, well, all of that is in this show here. And I think you might like Cross. So if so, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Man, Cross, eight episodes. This is day two. Let's jump into episode two and make sure you meet me here tomorrow for episode three recap. Episode two starts off after a long day of a phone call from a random person, flowers that were dropped off to the house. Alex Cross wakes up in the middle of the night. He hears some noise downstairs. And just like you and I, the first thing we do, we grab our protection and we go downstairs to try and figure it out because that's what the man of the house has to do. Even if there's 10 to 15 people down there, you got to go face this head on. Cross has his gun and when he gets in the kitchen, freeze, don't move. Turns out it was just little Janie. She was thirsty. She went downstairs. Nana Mama comes downstairs. Damon comes downstairs. They're all scared because Cross has his gun. She didn't broke a glass. He's like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. This is how nerve wracking it is for him right now. He's on high alert at all times. The next morning, Uncle Samson comes over and he's giving the kids one dollar per answer. Who's the first black mayor of D.C.? Who was Simba's mother on The Lion King? And the kids, they're getting it. They're very smart, smarter than I was at this age. But as the kids get ready to go off, we see Cross talk to his daughter and say, I'm sorry, that's on me. You should never have to go through that. You should never see that. But then Samson is saying, are you sure you're good, Cross? Because if you were doing a psyche vow on someone that pulled a gun on his daughter, you'd be sending them upstate to the insane asylum. But he's like, man, I'm trying to protect my family. Now, we remember Ed was putting together a dating profile. But on the dating profile was a different face, and he was going by the name of Josh. Well, Shannon is who he matched up with, and he was sitting in the coffee shop in episode one, and he watched her when she came in. Now they finally met up. And of course, Shannon is a little nervous. Why wouldn't you have your real picture on there? He's saying, the line of work that I'm in, I can't just be out there on dating profiles like that. So this is already a red flag, and she continues to go off with him and enjoy the day. Because he told her, oh, that's a fake picture of me. I got too much business. I can't really be on there. Oh, this is a catfish. I wouldn't have went anywhere with her. Alex and Samson, they're out and they're trying to figure out this case. Now, while they're at this diner piecing things together, we know that there is a burner phone. We know that there was a phone call made, but we don't know who actually has Amir's phone. There's a lady by the name of Tania. She shows up and now she's a reporter. And she actually has a lot of inside information. There's always information that leaks through the cracks. And she's like, wait, if you guys have a cell phone and you guys are tracing the cell phone, then you don't believe that this was a, a suicide. This was an actual homicide because there aren't any gang members in the hood that have sniper rifles who would kill Tavio. So now Cross and them are looking at her thinking, where'd you get this information from? And she's like, since you guys won't give me a comment, I won't tell you who's leaking my information. So now there's an investigative reporter on the case also. And you know when this happens, they'll start leaking information to the public also, which will actually make your case even tougher because inside information is getting out. In the investigation room, the police station is still trying to make this uh, accidental suicide, an accidental overdose. But the evidence that we're collecting is not showing that. And they're still trying to figure out who had Tavio's phone. Now, when they're watching this, there's a lot of people clashing in here. There's other detectives saying, nah, this is drug related. This was a, some gang, some street stuff. But when they go back to the footage of when Tavio got shot, someone had home footage of the girlfriend taking the phone off of Tavio. And that's why they couldn't find it. But Alex Cross is paying attention to details. Now, the girl that took the phone, they called her phone girl, but her name is Vanessa. She's Tavio's girlfriend, and we see her talking to her friend like, can you watch my son while I take this phone? Because I need to give this phone to somebody that can actually help us out, someone that's going to figure out what this information is, what this evidence is, and use it for good. 
Now, the friend does give her a gun and says, you need to stay protected because if they came after Amir for that, they came after Tavio, then they'll definitely be looking for you. Bobby Trey ends up meeting up with Ed. So this is who he's been in communication with. And on Ed's computer, we see a picture of Shannon and we see a picture of another woman. We aren't sure who that is yet, but we know in his book, he has serial killers and then he has whoever else he's messing with at the time. He's trying to make them look like that. But he's basically telling Ed, listen, I need you to go out there. I need you to make sure things are good. But since Bobby has been out in these streets, he's like, listen, Alex Cross and them are doing a little bit of investigating. You need to lay low. You need to stop what you're doing. But Ed reminds him, if you want to continue to get paid, you need to do as I say. And he basically says, you need to be a dog on the leash and do as I say. Go where I go. Move how I move. Now, at the house, we find out that Damon, he's a little prodigy. And inside of his bag is a, a invitation to an early Mozart, meaning you play the piano good. We can hone your skills. Now, we see Janie. She's over here. She's doing a little bit of hot scotch, a one, a two, a three. But you remember they put up cameras in front of the house? Well, there's a voice that comes over the camera. Hello, Janie. You're doing a great job. I didn't know anyone could do hot scotch like that. And Janie's like, what? What do you mean? So being a kid, she hears this. She goes behind the house. And now grandma, she's irate. Janie, where did you go? Where did you go? Now, while this is going on at the house, of course, Cross is trying to get back in Elle's good graces because it's been a year since his wife passed. Someone is showing him a little bit of affection. He goes back over there with some glasses because remember, he broke them at the dinner party the previous evening. And she's like, the only way I'll accept these glasses are if you break them in with me. One on one, you and I over dinner. But there's things going on at home. This might need a rain check. Alex rushes home. Samson shows up. He's, what's going on? Whoever broke into my house, put the scarf in there. They're here. They're talking to my daughter. Grandma didn't cut the wires on the camera. Well, I don't know why she would do that, but she was saying, I don't want anyone talking to my granddaughter, but we still need the security footage. And on the hopscotch squares, 115. 147. That's the time and date. January 15th, 147 p.m. The exact day and time that Maria was unalive. So whoever unalive Maria, they are getting closer and closer to cross. Everyone is running around the city trying to find out who the cell phone girl is, aka Vanessa. So Bobby Trey got information from Ed and they go down to the little shop where she worked. Now, she does a little bit of patties and maddies. And when he gets down there, he's singing that cameo with, no, nah, you sucker DJs. He asked the lady, where's Vanessa at? Will Vanessa be coming in? I hear she's the best at it. But this employee is smart and she's not giving up any information because if someone is so adamant about this, it seems a little suspicious. Now, Josh, a.k.a. Ed, a.k.a. we don't know who he really is. He's out with Shannon. He takes her to a museum. Now, she's still going along with this catfish, and he can't have his picture on there, and they're getting real close. That's because he's done his research. He knows what she's into. She's into the arts. She's into these museums. And while he's here, he's doing nothing but just stroking her ego. This is amazing. It's wonderful that you read these books also. So when you do your research on someone, this makes them a little more comfortable. Oh, we have a lot in common. Now, she's starting to say things about interviews, about being the creative director at the Ritz Carlton. He's like, really? I would have never imagined that. I could make a few calls and we could see what we can do because she's been trying to have interviews and they haven't came through. So, again, he's just making her comfortable. Josh is saying everything. Well, Ed is saying everything that needs to be said through this Josh character that he made up. And Shannon, she's eating it up because she sees a potential opportunity to move forward in her career and something she's always dreamed about. Now, as I told you, it's a race to find cell phone girl. So Cross and Samson, where do they go? They go to the friend's house that's watching Tavio Jr. And when they get over there, the friend's like, oh, Vanessa isn't here. We're not talking to you. We don't talk to no police. But he's trying to find an end. And what he sees is Tavio was playing a little game and he's like, oh, you know the difference between the turtle and the tortoise? Basically stalling time so he can look around. And he notices that there's a little book over here that all the letters have been filled in. So this is showing him 
that Vanessa and her son, they have a very close relationship. But the friend, she's been around the police before, and she's like, listen, just leave the house. We don't want to do any more talking to you. Vanessa ends up getting a call from her friend. The police, they've been here asking questions. And she's like, listen, I'm just going to lay low. Tell my son maybe maybe a day from now I can see him. But I have to get this phone to whoever is going to help us. I got to make some calls. Now, she's trying to get in contact with that reporter, Tania. But that's a little bit later on. While she's in here, she's not paying attention to her surroundings. And guess who's behind her? Bobby Trey. And Bobby Train is trying to figure out, should he drink whiskey tonight or should he drink gin? So he's been following her. Then Bobby Trey books a room right next door in the same motel. And he got that Trillville never ever on. And he's a little weird. He's dancing around in his underwear. He's getting hyped. He's on lines. He's doing that white girl, that cocaina. He's drinking some whiskey, drinking some gin. And she's next door like, damn, who is this neighbor? Who is this guy that's this loud? Because she's trying to call Tania. And she does make the phone call and says, I have some valuable information. I'm Tavio's girlfriend. Call me back. The next day, Ed shows up and he's talking to Shannon. But remember, he's showing up as Josh. He's talking to Shannon. And he's like, hey, what's going on? She said, I got an interview at the Ritz. He said, really? You do? She's like, did you have something to do with this? He's like, well, you know, I pulled a few strings. I'm about helping people out. So now he extends the invitation to her. How about tomorrow morning? You come over to my house and we'll go over some interview tips. And she's like, what? It's a little too early for me to come. He said, no, 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 no. It's going to be platonic. Not that I'm not interested, but I'm just going to make some bacon. I'll give you some pointers and you go on about your day and knock out this interview. So Shannon, she really wants this, but she's hesitant. But the opportunity is taking over her body. Now, you remember, he was supposed to break these glasses in. Samson shows up. He's like, what are you doing in your work shirt? You know you're supposed to get fresh, put some smell good on, go on over to Elle's house. He's like, I'm not going. We got a case to solve. But Samson is like me, man. Sometimes you got to take a break away from work, Cross. And he's like, you got to take care of yourself. When you put the oxygen mask on, they tell you to put yours on first. As I mentioned in episode one, and as I mentioned before on my channel, you got to take care of yourself first or you won't be able to help anybody. So he's trying to convince him, listen, man, I'll help out with the kids. You know, Uncle Samson, I'm here for that. Go and visit L. Plus, you need it. It's been a year, brother. So, of course, you know, Alex, he goes and takes a shower, gets dressed, heads over to L's house. Now, there's been, you know, a little connection between the two. He has his little anger management, the hero complex. But while they're sitting here, things are going good. And one thing leads to another. A couple of wines. You know how that happens. And, well, they get ready to get it on. But then we look at Alex Cross. He's like, no, no, wait. I'm not ready. And she tells him, I'll wait for you. Alex had an opportunity with this beautiful brown woman. She wanted Alex. But Alex said, no, I got to wait. And Alex, he turns it down. Back at the motel, well, it isn't going good for Vanessa. She made that phone call, but guess who's in her room? Bobby Trey. And the gun that she had from her friend, guess who has it? Bobby Trey does. And he's like, well, you're Tavio's girlfriend. Where's the phone? What do you got going on? Oh, that's right. Here's the phone. What's the code? And she's saying she doesn't know. It's about to get ugly. Kayla, she notifies Alex and Samson, get over here right now. We just got a ping on the phone. Now, the ping that they got on this phone, it goes off of the tower. Now, you typically want three pings off of three different towers so you can triangulate the signal and you can get a precise location. But they only have one ping. So when they look at this map, they say, okay, here go Tavio Jr.'s daycare. Here goes the bookstore. There's a motel. Wait a minute. The white horse that Tavio Jr. was talking about is in front of that motel. So Alex Cross pieced it together, and they got to get to this motel. Now, Bobby Trey, he in here doing the most. Pistol whipping. He's torturing her. He got music playing and tells her, this playlist is about to be over. What I need you to do is unlock this phone, and I can potentially let you go. Well, when she unlocks the phone, she sends something to herself. And he's like, what the heck did you just do? Now, Alex Cross is downstairs. They talk to the front desk, and he's like, oh, yeah, that girl, she's in room 222. So they rush up there. But guess what? Bobby Trey hears them. And before Bobby Trey leaves, 
he unalives Vanessa, blade to the throat. He escapes through the bathroom window, and now Alex is having flashbacks of what happened to his wife. Vanessa dies in his arms the same way his wife did. But he didn't call the police. Samson did. He just went in here. He didn't try to put no pressure on the neck, put a towel, put anything on there to try to stop the bleeding. He just let her bleed out in his hands. This is two times Alex has dropped the ball and froze under pressure. The sun begins to come up, and guess who's here? Tania. She's like, wait a minute. I got a call from Vanessa. I get over here. She's unalive. What is going on, Cross? And he's like, man, this is deeper than what we thought. She said, listen, I'll give you information that I have if you promise me an exclusive interview. So he tells her exactly what he knows. Are these crimes connected? Yes. Was there a murder? Yes. Do they have a suspect? No. And he's like, just give me time to figure this out before you release it. She said, I'll give you a couple of hours. But it's no telling if the streets get this information first. So Alex, man, let me tell you, work is just piling up. After this happens, Alex goes straight over to Tavio Jr., who's at Vanessa's friend's house. Now, he doesn't tell him that his mother is on a lie. But what he's trying to do is just encourage, hey, and he also messes with the, the iPad. Boom, 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 puts a little code in for him, unlocks it because he got the code to the iPad now. And he keeps telling the kid, you're a superhero. Your mom and dad, they made you a superhero. So when this kid does find out, he'll still believe that he's a superhero. And even that his parents are unalive, they put him here for a real reason. You got to do something because he lost both parents, Tavio and Vanessa. Now, the recording that Vanessa sent to herself, they do have it now. And they're listening to Amir call who? Tavio. He's like, hey, man, I went on a date to 41 Price Street. 41 Price Street is where who lives? Oh, this is where Ed is at. Now, we know that Shannon is showing up because they got to get ready for this interview at the Ritz-Carlton. See, everything is connected. Vanessa, gullible. She's not paying attention to anything. So when they get in there, this place is historical. She's like, man, this is nice. He's like, oh, yeah. Well, the bacon and stuff is in here. Come and be comfortable. Let's get ready to get you prepared. The interview's at, what, 2.30? She said, yeah. Well, Ed ain't here for no interview. Remember he said he's done his research? Well, he's done his research. He starts talking to her about everything she got going on. And one thing about her, she's a germaphobe, meaning she uses hand sanitizer all the time in her house, at work, in her purse. So he put some hand sanitizer at the front door because he knew she would use it. But he put fentanyl in there. So now her body is very weak because when you touch fentanyl, it absorbs through the skin. And she's trying to make a call. And he's like, go ahead, do what you got to do. This guy, Ed, is very, very weird. And he's the guy we've seen in the beginning of episode one. And now it's kind of making sense, but it isn't making sense because we don't know what Ed has up his sleeve or what he's actually trying to do. All right, there you go. The recap of episode two. Man, this is a very interesting story, but you have to pay close attention. I'm trying to give you guys all of the details, but let me know what you think about this teamwork between Ed and Bobby Trey. Do you think that these two are going to be able to last long together as far as working and kidnapping these people? Because right now, Bobby Trey is a little sloppy how he's moving through these streets. But let me know what you think. Make sure you tune in tomorrow, same time, 6.30 p.m., which is my time. So 1.30 p.m. Eastern, recap of episode three. I'm ODIJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.